Greetings, Nerf Nation. Let's talk about the Blaster Core. Now, Blaster Core is actually made by a group or company called Blaster Core. Um, this is a revision one. They are working on a version two. You can also find reviews on this uh, back from around the time of End War uh, on Lord Drax channels and also Naptown Nerf. This one I had custom ordered in white. Um, it also normally does not come with the black XT60 connector. I added that in later and I did some Sharpie coloration on it, give it a little bit more definition. Um, basically it is a afterburner which speeds up your dart launching out of a typical blaster attachment point on any blaster that has one. Um, you basically got your flywheels in there, it comes out the other side hopefully a lot faster. Um, it's worth noting that uh, Blaster Core sent me a lot of extra little parts in order to get this up and running uh, the weekend I received it for a war, which I very much appreciate. Uh, this has got uh, Fang revamped motors at a 43 millimeter cage, 3D printed, um, using Cyclone or Containment Crew Cyclone wheels. Uh, it's running 2S on a thousand milliamp hour uh, Turnigy graphene 7.4 volt battery which is freshly charged. Initially when I got this the barrel connector or adapter here that fits into it had a inner ring inside the barrel tube which would not allow attachments like the uh, long strike barrel in order to fit which that's because this inner ring of the barrel tube is actually much larger on the older Nerf stuff than it is on the current gen, which probably isn't helping it you know, with air at all, but when you put it in, it would go into a certain point stop and you couldn't get it to rotate. So what I ended up having to do is get that out with a Dremel, sand it down, uh, works fine. I've let Blaster Core know about that and they're working on trying to fix that in future uh, versions. Um, Really, it, it wasn't hard to put together, it wasn't uh, all that difficult to assemble or rewire. You know, if you've got basic soldering skills, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'd recommend watching Captain Xavier's uh, Strife rewire video. I think it's, he's got the Mod Mondays um, on his channel. And that's essentially all you really have to do with this. Because that's basically your power to your motor connectors. Now, something of which to add is that Blaster Core, in their video with like Naptown Nerf, uh, designed a, or at least included a accordion style pressure switch that went back to the grip on the Raven that he had in the video. I also got that pressure switch. Um, that's about a one amp tactical flashlight uh, switch is what that's for. Um, it really probably shouldn't be used for the motors because it's probably not electrically, uh, it, it's causing resistance there. So what Blaster Core is currently doing with this design is they're going to build a, a battery box trigger combination, uh, which will probably go on the bottom, something like that, and have a grip, I imagine, or some such, um, like a foregrip, I think. But that's up to them, but I'm letting you know that, you know, there's a you know, revision more or less coming to this that'll have some improvements. Uh, right now, as of this video, um, they are out of stock on their web store on Etsy. Um, I imagine they're just making more. This is actually a battery box uh, for a Nerf Tactical Rail off Thingiverse. Um, I had somebody local just print one up and slightly enlarge it in order to fit the 2S battery dimensions. Um, I do miss that this doesn't have a uh, connector or stop instead of it sliding all over the place. I've had to sand it down in order to get it to fit some rails and then some rails it still doesn't fit because Nerf rails are all apparently slightly different sizes. So worth noting, but that fits in there. You put Velcro across to make a little flap door, works just fine. Now for the next part, because there is no existing trigger solution that really fits the need, um, 
this is what I came up with. This is a modulus grit blaster attachment, which is now discontinued, but you can kind of find them here and there. Um, this has just got the wiring for the battery and the motor going in through the side, going down uh, underneath into the grip where it's wired to a standard Omron switch. Um, probably not as well as I'd like if I was doing this over again. I'd tell somebody not to put hot glue in a position where it would drain into your switch. Not the best of ideas. But we live and learn. But uh, this is also XT60 connectors just covered with heat shrink. Um, again, if I was doing this all over, and we use this as an example, You could take your grip blaster, which it's worth noting that the, on the top of this, this is actually the uh, gripper system or um, part off of a uh, Nerf battle app, which was like a cell phone holder attachment. These were known for being a lot stronger, which is because on the bottom, if you would look at it, the uh, spring arm is a lot more stiff, it's a lot more robust and little plastic tabs that determine where the stoppers are for it are actually further up than a normal attachment so it actually stops sooner and has more tension. So these are actually really good if you can come across them cheap and then they fit in just about any other attachment. So you can just swap out the guts. Now if you do that, you've got kind of a, uh, an LMG of sorts. The problem you end up with, I'll lay this down so you can see it, is when I built this, I didn't exactly expect it to be so much distance between the blaster core and whatever barrel you're using. And a lot of people love the long strike barrel for how it looks. So, um, essentially I made the wires just barely long enough to be able to do this properly, which means there's a little extra tension that shouldn't be. If you were uh, doing this for like a permanent install, of course, you could wire it through the blaster, but at that point, why are you using an afterburner and not just putting everything inside the blaster itself? Uh, now, for a Springer, I mean, different story. But what you do is go ahead and hook this up. Yeah. And of course, this, if you haven't noticed already, Goodwill Long Strike. Uh, it is stock as stock can be, nothing special about it whatsoever. Doesn't sound all that healthy. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be getting decent numbers out of it eventually. Now I do not own a chronograph. I'm kind of waiting for the Nerf attachment from Toy Fair, which will be interesting to see what this gets at that point in time. Uh, we're going to be firing some darts downrange out of 18 uh, dart clips or clipazines. And uh, the last five in each mag is going to end up being uh, AccuStar darts. All darts are fresh. The uh, first 13 or so are going to be elite darts. We're going to be exactly 31 feet away from this target here above me on the wall. And we'll see what we can get. Now this was originally also built for, like I said, a white out long strike. Uh, that's why everything was built in white but uh, that's got an on Orange Mod Works uh, Immortal kit in it, uh, which we may be getting some numbers of later. But we'll give you some idea what this looks like with a long strike, a rapid strike, and a retaliator. And the footage will be from the blaster with this, which is basically a $5 cell phone mount on top of the battle lap mounting plate and uh, fingers. And this has just got you know, a bolt, nuts and uh, some flat washers on top of this to hold it together which as tight as that goes on works really well like so so you get a first person view with that uh, oh and one more thing before I forget it I've had to uh, contact the seller of this battery and we've gone back and forth and it's going to actually be returned tomorrow which is why I am doing this video tonight about 6 p.m. on the East Coast. Um, this is probably performing 11%, I believe is what we said, 
uh, I forget if it was 11% uh, below par or if it's a flat 11% is what it's performing at um, based on the numbers. But anyway, it's not up to complete power like it should be and that's why this battery is going back. Um, unfortunately, some other circumstances are is that I'm not going to be able to be doing stuff in the long run, so therefore I probably won't have a battery immediately to be able to replace it with, and I don't have any other 2S on me. So, with that all said, let's get to a firing demo. Alright, well, here is our firing test with a stock long strike. Uh, I didn't mention in the intro part that the battery is charged 100% as much as can be, and we'll try to charge it between each demo. Um, now we've got the uh, blaster core hooked up, the battery box, and we're going to be aiming for that target each time we fire. Now this is again still a stock springer, so we'll have to prime it as well as fire uh, with the flywheels each time. So here we go. our first accuracy strike. That should be it. All right, back again with a uh, retaliator again stock. Um, so there's going to be some shaking going on here. The, uh, in this case, since I'm missing a retaliator barrel, it's got the long strike barrel on it, but that's not going to make a massive amount of difference. Um, you're also mounted to the forward barrel instead of the top of the retaliator, because otherwise you're going to be going back and forth, and that make everybody sick. So, without further ado, Pretty straight. right now. Well, that's 18 out of the retaliator. Next up, rapid strike. All right, and here we are with the stock rapid strike, which 
You can probably hear from that it's not in the best of shape either, but uh, we'll see what we can get with it. Hopefully it will not jam. 12 round mags do not like rapid strikes whatsoever, it seems, particularly the flip clip ones. So that's why I'm using 18s. We'll see how well it does. Just for giggles here, why don't we put in another mag? Try again. Next up, we'll see if we can get the Orange Mod Works Long Strike uh, working or not, see if that has any appreciable difference. But uh, we'll see here as it needs a quick repair. So here we are with the Orange Mod Works uh, Long Strike uh, Mortal Kit. Uh, I've got four darts loaded after some uh, fixing. Had some springs slip out of place. Yay. Uh, so we're going to go through two Elite darts, two AccuStrike darts, just with the Orange Mod Works kit, which this thing is fairly difficult to prime every time because the catch in the back is having a heck of a time trying to latch. Uh, but this is mainly for purposes of just kind of giving you something to compare to. So and this does have the barrel, of course, on it. It was also difficult to prime when you have a camera on top of it. Pretty decent on the AccuStrike. Slide action is just really tough. All right, now we're going to switch to putting the afterburner and an 18 clip in it. All right, so we got our 18 clip loaded. We got the afterburner on the front, got the battery box on the top. Uh, this is still going to be prime action because, of course, it's a Orange Mod Works kit, but uh, we'll see whether or not putting something high power behind the afterburner makes all that much difference, which I don't think it will, but let's find out, shall we? It definitely is long to hold. It's like holding a Centurion now, which I could move the grip back, but, you know. Really, it takes a two-handed prime in order to get it to go through. I 
would say if I didn't have all the extra stuff on it, particularly the camera because it's it's on a uh, pole mount of sorts, I could easily you know drop this towards the ground, rack it with both hands, bring it back up. That's what I had to do in wars where I've used this previously without the afterburner. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's not super practical in the way it's set up right now if I was doing it just for footage. Overall, I'm not noticing that much of a power difference from it hitting the wall. And there went, if you heard that, one of the grips off the uh, priming bar. Now, before you all hit the comments and say, get a zip tie. It's already zip tied, it fell off anyway. It's not happy. But that's what you get for one hand priming it. These are the white E-kind waffles instead of the original AccuStrike, but I mean, they're hitting just as accurate, if not better. the priming bar in one dry fire which the orange mod work kit does not appreciate whatsoever all right well we'll be back in just a moment with opinions all right well I think after testing I don't feel that there's that much difference with the uh, afterburner in front of the orange mod work kit that it's really adding that much um, you know once I get a chronograph and a new battery, you know, certainly try to test again and see whether we've got enough data to actually say one way or another. But I doubt it at this point. Um, I mean, even as much as the darts ricochet, they're not ricocheting all that far, uh, you know, different. You know, looking at the dart mess on the floor that I still haven't picked up, you know, the white darts that were the end of the round there with the uh, Accu fakes from Ekind or waffle tip darts. Um, there's really not that much difference. I mean, a couple of them are maybe six inches further than some of the rest of them, but that's not a, a massive difference to say one way or another. Unfortunately, it's raining outside as of this time, which is one reason I'm in this basement room uh, to be able to do like a distance test, you know, versus just the Orange Mod Works kit anyway. But the bottom line, I think, is that, you know, if you're going with an afterburner, you know, is it worth it? Well, I think you got to ask yourself a question. Do you want to use it on stock blasters and improve the performance of stock blasters without um, going to the trouble of popping open the shell and doing a lot of rework, uh, or you know, keep basically locking your mod to an individual blaster? Do you want something that's modular so you can pop it off one and go to the next, and pop it off one and go to the next, like if you're at a war? I think in my case, I love different Nerf shells. 
you know, the Long Strike series. I have all three of them. I've got two blue ones actually. Um, so, you know, that's a, a favorite of mine. I wish they'd bring it back in, you know, like the uh, Sonic uh, Fire, because I think that'd be awesome. But, uh, you know, maybe add a, a regulator select fire switch and make it a flywheel instead of a springer, but still with priming action. That'd be awesome. You know, Hasbro take them. But, uh, you know, the, the afterburner itself, um, with its flywheel cage, I think was running 25 US on their uh, Etsy store. The uh, revamped fangs was 15 for a pair, which is pretty standard. Um, you know, the battery box ran me 15 to be 3D printed, which if you got a 3D printer, I mean, you make them all day until uh, you get one that fits correctly. Uh, battery, uh, that was probably in the 20 something dollar range. Grip Blaster is going to run you probably eight if you can find one retail floating around online. I mean, the like, sky's the limit. Um, but I'm sure there's other things you could probably do with this, use a different type of foregrip. Um, between the wire and the switch and everything else, I probably, you know, another 25 some odd bucks. So, I mean, by the time I got done buying a 2S charger, which I didn't have a LiPo charger big enough to handle uh, Nerf grade batteries before, I probably sunk about $150 into this. Now, if you had all that equipment, yeah, I mean, that's probably $50 cheaper. You're putting yourself in the $100 range, which if you're doing that for another single blaster and you have the equipment already, and you're in this, you know, sport enough to say that you're going to be using this, you know, once or twice a month, something like that. I think you could get, you know, there's value in there. You could probably get your use out of it. Um, you know, put it on a rapid strike, put it on a retaliator, put it on whatever springer or a rapid fire type thing you want. It'll go as fast as the pusher motor will spit out the darts. You know, you're not going to see that big of a difference. Um, now, somebody with the motors installed in the blaster and they've completely rewired it and the thing is completely set up uh, for just that mod built into the blaster and they are running, you know, three, three S Neo Rhinos versus your, you know, revamped things in an afterburner. Uh, you know, it's probably going to come down to uh, you know, dark crush in the cage, which it's worth noting again, this is 43 millimeter uh, cage spacing. And in hindsight, that's, you know, they're just, when I spec all this out, the revamp things were just literally releasing. And they're still, even now, isn't really any decent reviews of them that compare them to like the Neo Rhinos. And the Neo Rhinos were out of stock at the time. So I basically did not have a choice if I was gonna get this war ready uh, for the weekend at that point. So I went with the revamp fangs, went with 2S, changed everything pretty much I had in mind other than the, the cyclones. Um, according to Blaster Core and according to Containment Crew, who were both nice enough to put together a build and try to uh, see what would happen, this is supposedly getting about uh, mid 120s. Uh, I think average is like 126, uh, maybe 128, somewhere in there. Let's say 127, split the difference. That's a little bit lower than I was figuring. I mean, if you uh, look at foam blast numbers on the old fangs or any of the rest of the stuff on the 41 and 42 millimeter cages, you're looking at 160 FPS. I was trying to go lower, you know, 130, 140s, mainly because I didn't want to chew up darts and, you know, be safe. Um, as is, that choice of 43 millimeter cage spacing actually hurt me, and it uh, means I've got lower FPS. Uh, which 127 FPS is granted should be faster than what a Orange Model Works kit is getting, so. I can still say it's a powerful long strike. Um, if you put afterburner, uh, as we did in the first video, on a stock uh, long strike, I like the priming action of that a whole lot better. Uh, if the darts are still coming out at 127, 
I'd say for, forget the Orange Mod Works kit. Uh, it's more hassle than it's necessarily worth. Um, you know, on a rapid strike, if you're going for rapid fire and you get a big old drum and all that, uh, I mean, you're going to have to keep your wheels spun up and it's going to have to, you know, chew through those. But the same thing would pretty much happen with uh, if you wired it internally. So basically what you're just sacrificing is whether or not you're going to go with something that's modular and external. You know, it, it does look a little bit chunky, but, you know, it's not too bad, at least with the, the long strike as it is. And they do offer... Uh, some custom colors uh, to get it printed in. And all of this is, of course, a, a 3D printed part. If you want to look at it a little bit more closely, like I said, uh, uh, Lord Drac and uh, Naptown Nerf have got two videos on this. Um, but other than that, I mean, it it's mo you're you're just exchanging modularity for having something that's a little bit more performance oriented in a single thing. Um, and nothing's stopping me from, you know, saying, okay, I'm tired of the afterburner kit. I'm going to take the motors and wheels out of this, go print another cage or buy another cage and go stick it in another blaster. You know, because you're still going to need the battery. You're still going to need a lot of these parts. Um, you know, granted, the battery box aside, uh, once they get the rest of the accessories for the blaster core figured out, um, you know, there, there's a couple of instances I have to mention too where like you try to put something on this lower rail and depending on the blaster, it might bump up against, you know, the attachment down here or you're trying to slide something back and it won't quite fit. That's not necessarily a design flaw. It just means there's so much out there to have to be considerate of and I don't think Blaster Core's got, you know, a massive arsenal to test it against. Um, that's the same thing that happened with the barrel that had to be ground out. Uh, with the attachment point underneath here. You know, that's just something where the more people that have pieces to test against and be able to give them feedback, the more they'll be able to take care of it. Um, but I really appreciated the guys uh, at Blaster Core and their communication and, you know, willingness to help and throwing in a couple parts for me to be able to get this ready and able to work. Um, you know, overall, I think it turned out fairly nice for how it looks. But, um, you know, another kind of contention point of something like I was saying with it being really tight is, I don't know if the camera can see it in here or not, but the, uh, with as taut as this is and unflexible, it's pulling the XT60 connector insulation off, of which eventually it's going to break that soldering connection right here. But that's not really the blaster core's fault. That's just something where you either need a 90 degree, um, or you know maybe a secondary attaching point or something that you could solder here on the front face and then just connect it directly in um you know there, there's got to be some other location you might be able to put a power connector and go attach it to but you know that can all be figured out at some other point so thank you for watching and that's all